coming out today, we see that, amen, many people, amen, regardless of here, you can wipe that out and wipe this here, amen. It's not in the names, but uh, I want you to know that I'm not good with names, but I still respect every one of you that are in this place to improve the leadership, to improve my life, first make it down. You came to today because you were invited. But that's partly true. You're here today because God allowed you to see another day. That's mostly true. We make plans, but the Bible said that tomorrow is not promised to us. But as a result of our plan, God said, you know what? I'm going to honor their plan today. Yes. And I'm going to allow them to come and worship today with the saints. You are the Lord God today.
prior to. There was a pretext where Jesus had dealt with the Pharisees in the same chapter. Where a sinner came and sat down with them and ate with them and the Pharisees was upset. Because, you know, it felt that the sinner cannot eat with Jesus. Not only did he had to deal with that, they dealt with the question from John's disciples. You know, John had the disciples and there were still people following John even after Jesus had come to the earth. And they asked Jesus, why is it that we, John disciples, and the Pharisees are fasting and your disciples are not fasting? Jesus said, right now, they're planning the thing to fast for when I need them. When I go back and get their father, then they'll be able to fast. Then a woman, then at the same moment, uh, a young man came, a ruler of a house, and said, Jesus, my daughter is dead. And if you would just come and touch her, I know that she will become alive again. And about that moment, while he was on his way to the ruler's house, here come the woman with the issue of blood. It seems like everybody's catching on to this roller coaster with Jesus in you, except maybe me or you. And then she reached out and she touched the hem of his garment. As a result of that, she was healed from this issue of blood that she had. Jesus, but Jesus followed through and went to the ruler's house and he laid hands on the young lady after the people laughed at him. Yes, there are people that are laughing at the Lord today. They're laughing at his word. They're laughing at what Jesus can do. But yet they have no hope and they have no answer to fix the problem. Yet they're laughing at Jesus. They laughed at Jesus. Jesus said, you need to get out of here. And then after Jesus put all the naysayers, those that were laughing out of the room, he reached his hand down and he laid hands. Bible said that she raised from the dead. But there was a lot of things going on here when Jesus met the two blind men. They were able to see all of this, not in the, in the physical sense, but spiritually. They were able to see this, and so they, they, they followed Jesus around. The Bible said Jesus had to say, now listen here, I, I need to go home, I need to get some rest, and so I need to get to a place where I can take it easy. But there was something about these blind men that they were operating in a man hope and faith and, and, and they decided that you know even though I cannot see sometimes seeing is a reward because we see so many things nowadays it can get us in trouble and sometimes when we see things doubt come because we see those things and we doubt what God can do based upon what everybody else has said to us and for them, they have an expectation that God and Jesus will do what they ask Jesus to do. And so they follow behind Jesus and, and they have this thing about them. They have this what I call experiential faith. It means that I want to experience what God can do and feel good for me right now. And so they have hope. And hope is an attitude of expectancy concerning the things that are to be. But faith is a something of confidence. Sometimes with something real, faith is something real and definite within us. We possess here now a hope says, I'm going, I'm expecting God to move. And these young men, they had the faith, but they were hoping for Jesus to do something for them. Yeah. Amen. In order for, amen, their life to get better. Yeah. But what I, I figured out was because they could not see, they had something that called scriptorial faith. And scriptorial faith is, amen, saying that I will line myself up with the word of God, even though my senses and my, my, my eyes and my legs and my arm, amen, don't want to agree with what I'm telling it to do. And that scriptorial faith says, guess what? You're going to speak those things that be not as though they were. In other words, scriptorial faith tells you, God said it in the Bible, I believe it, even though my conditions may not dictate the consequences.
Hebrews 11, when he said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. Scriptorial faith is present, hope is in the future, and then hope is developed because of your faith. Meaning that if you believe God, you are expecting something to happen. Hope is really the expectancy of what God really can do for you. Well, Pastor, I had a bad meeting. Well, change your attitude. Stop expecting a better way. Pastor, my day is going to be bad, not as you expect it to be bad. But if you want a good day, change your expectation of that day. If you want a good year, change your expectation of how your year is going to be. If you want to have the next best 10 years, change your expectation. Don't live in the past. You are not allowed the past to control you. That is called positive expectation of what God can do for you. Because you cannot see into the future, only faith can. Spare with me. My assurance, my assurance in what God says, He will do bring in an anticipation. If God says in Scripture your faith, if He says He will do this in His word, I'm not anticipating God to do it. And that's why when we were worshiping the Lord, and I was telling you, hey man, do you receive it? I was hoping you said, yeah, I received it. I was hoping at all. And then that worship that was happening, and then and God said, I see increase. And I was hoping that you said, I received it all. Oh, I was hoping you said, I received the increase. Not because I was worshiping God, but because you actually received the increase. Jesus was talking to Martha. Martha called Jesus in St. John 11 chapter. He said, you know what? My son, Lazarus, my, my brother, Lazarus, sick. And then Jesus told Lazarus, Jesus told Martha to open up the tomb. She said, no, 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 no. He's stinking. And Jesus said, didn't I tell you to open up the tomb? Yeah. Jesus was telling them, you got to believe first before you can see. Are you with me now? Huh? And some situations that we are in, we must believe first in order for us to see it. Our power is a good time of mind. At times, we want to see things by it. Faith in God makes you become an optimist, not a pessimist. And this is why I tell you, amen, uh, stay away from negative people. Yes, sir. You understand what I'm saying? Stay away from that. It's not, about, it's not always what you think like, it's who you think with. <laughs> because you can think like all by yourself. But it's who you think with sometimes that calls you to have a bad day. Calls you to have a nervous breakdown. Calls you to have a bad day. Because if I think with them, I begin to think like them. And I don't want to think like them. They don't love the Lord. I don't want to think. The only person that I really want to think like is like Jesus. <laughs> Faith is not based on evidence of our physical senses, but on eternal and visible truth and realities revealed by God's Word. Paul brings out the object of faith and the sense of perception. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, he said, For we walk by faith and not by sight. If we are carnal minded, we can accept only that which we our senses can reveal to us. But if we are spiritual minded, our faith makes God's word more real than anything, anything that our senses can reveal to us. We do not base our faith on that which we see or experience. We make our faith on God's word. Well, I see that you have a bad day today. That's what you see. I see I'm having a good day. I see that you are sad today. That's what you see. I'm telling you, I'm happy. 
Your faith cannot be apprehended by a mere intellectual, scholarly, academia, what's logic, or facts or doctrine. Faith can only be apprehended and then by a spiritual mind. To be common minded, it appears foolish to the common mind. Man, for a person says, I believe God. And the person says, the common mind says, don't you understand what you're going through? But I said, guess what? I believe God. And it proved by his senses. The spiritual mind accepts the testimony of God's word and the very unchangeable truth and did accept the testimony of the senses only in so far that they line up with the scriptures. Scripture, your faith, what this does, and I know, and then I may have a hurt toe, I'm using it as a metaphor, whatever you're dealing with, what you're going through. I know I don't make you hurt, I know I still feel pain, but guess what? The Bible said I'm healing. Don't worry about that. 
sincerity in the night is that I'm going to have a conceit. Oh, no, you just messed up, God. And that's where we mess up. You know, see, sincerity in the night is you've got a conceit, child. And somebody says, you, that's impossible. And someone is sitting out there saying, that's just a story in the Bible. No, this is the word of God. This actually happens. Books are stories that you read, but this thing gives it five. Crazy is sufficient for me, even though I don't look like you want me to love 
Jesus was testing their faith. He knew that they were about to end, but it wasn't time to address the issue. Because he knew God always comes to Jesus. And somebody had this old man. Well, why do I have to ask God for something that he already knows? Because it relates to your faith. If you are not bold enough, if you, if you are not obedient enough to ask God to do it, well, why shouldn't he do it? You understand what I'm saying? Why shouldn't he do it? Why should God deliver somebody that's disobedient? Why should God do a miracle for somebody that's disobedient? But all God is asking you to do, and that's the action. He said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it for you. He said, ask him. Yeah. 